Moving on, around 4,000 health care workers in Oregon and southwest Washington began a three-day strike today. They're unhappy with the latest offer from Kaiser Permanente at the bargaining table. It's a table that union members say Kaiser walked away from today until the strike ends on Saturday morning. The strike here at home is part of a nationwide strike against Kaiser in what the union is calling the largest health care strike in the history of the United States. The bargaining process started way back in April for hundreds of positions. It includes radiology technicians, medical assistants and housekeepers, among many others. They want better pay and more job protections. And they argue that Kaiser's, quote, bad faith bargaining is getting in the way of solving the short staffing crisis, something just about every health care system is dealing with these days. For its part, Kaiser says it is offered guaranteed across the board raises in the Northwest, totaling 12.5% over four years, as well as minimum wage of $21 an hour in Oregon and Washington. The healthcare giant says some locations will have temporary workers until the strike ends. Now, you know us, we always try to give you some extra context on big stories like this one. And the strike made us kind of wonder about the origins of Kaiser. How'd the company get its start? Well, it turns out its history goes way back 90 years to Southern California at a massive construction project. According to Kaiser's official history, this doctor, Sidney Garfield, started it all way back in 1933 during the Great Depression. He was fresh out of medical school and built a small hospital to care for workers in Southern California on a big aqueduct project. But he was running out of money since insurance only paid after he cared for patients and many workers did not have insurance, but he treated them anyway. An insurance salesman suggested a solution. The insurance companies would pay a fixed amount per day per covered worker up front. It eased the financial strain on Garfield and also gave him an incentive to keep the workers healthy. He would make more money if he could keep the workers out of the hospital but get paid for their care anyway. It was an early form of the HMO. When the aqueduct work ended, Dr. Garfield planned to go into private practice. But industrialist Henry Kaiser was building the massive Grand Coulee Dam in Washington with 6,500 workers and convinced Garfield to move there and care for them. Garfield updated the local Mason City Hospital and soon began caring not just for the workers, but also their families. Since the medical plan was relatively cheap for the families, they went to the doctor sooner and avoided more serious and expensive to treat medical issues. In 1941, the dam was nearly finished. But America was pulled into World War II, and Henry Kaiser had shipyards in Portland and Vancouver and California. He needed health care for 30,000 workers there. Once again, he convinced Dr. Garfield and his prepaid health care system to join the effort. When the war ended, Henry Kaiser planned to shut the medical system down. But the Longshoremen's Union went to Kaiser and the doctor's group and said if they'd keep the program going, the union would send all their members there. So, on July 21st, 1945, the Permanente Health Plan officially opened to the public. Over the next 10 years, more than 300,000 people joined the plan in Northern California. In 1953, the health plan changed its name to reflect the three separate but closely connected entities it had become and still is today. There's Kaiser Foundation Health Plan, that's the insurance side, and the Kaiser Foundation Hospitals, those are the buildings, and the Permanente Medical Groups. By 1980, the system had nearly 4 million members and 125 hospitals and clinics in nine states. Today, Kaiser has grown to 12.7 million members, along with 39 hospitals, 622 medical offices, 92,200 doctors and nurses, and 213,000 employees. So yeah, they're big. And the strike that began today is not the first time that Kaiser workers have hit the picket lines. We'll bring you some of that history tomorrow, right here on The Story.